Howdy friends, welcome back to Plumbing with Tim. Today's lesson, I will be demonstrating to you how to replace a gas control valve on a residential natural gas water heater. This is a list of a few tools you'll need. A pair of channel locks, small pipe wrench, a wire brush, small adjustable wrench, needle nose pliers, small channel locks, half inch stainless steel nipple, as well as pipe dope, a bottle of soap water, and a bucket with a few rags. Let's go inside and get started. And here is our natural gas water heater, Reliance brand. First three things that need to happen before we do the work and replace this gas control valve is make sure that the gas is turned off, the water is turned off, and the water heater is drained. This particular water heater we did not install. Of course, that is not my work, but it's around six years old. Now, this video is particularly for water heaters that are within 10 years old, okay, that have the newer style gas valves. You get anything 15, 20 years old, it's gonna be really hard pressed to try to find a replacement valve. And at that time, we might as well just go ahead and replace the water heater. In this instance, this water heater was 2018, which means it's six years old. So we were able to find the part. Before you start your job, you need to make sure to identify the numbers on the gas control valve and make sure that you can locate one and bring it with you so you have a replacement. And I'll show you how to do that. This particular valve was made by Honeywell and it has a status warning light and all the little codes that go with it and tells you how to troubleshoot. But as a replacement on the side, it has numbers and these are the numbers that you're looking for are right here and that four ends with 1158 so that's that's the model that we ended up picking up before we came out to do the job very important before you leave the job to go get the valve take a picture of this sticker okay, let's get started making sure that your gas is off first thing we want to do is we want to remove this flexible gas supply line right here small adjustable wrench we're going to take this supply line off there that's got to come off first you just move it and get out of the way we don't have to get into the valve or move any of that other stuff somebody put lots of white pipe dope on there eventually we're going to have to take this fitting off too but first of all we're going to disconnect the pilot assembly supply as well as the gas supply and this wire harness as well as this right here which is this striker for your ignition it's just kind of a plug and play just unplug it take it easy with it just lay it aside uh, down here is a plug and play it pulls out that's the striker that goes to your pilot assembly all right those are the three that need to come off there now that we're all freed up here we need to disconnect these two lines right here we're going to start with this nut right here and take your time nice and easy nobody's in a hurry here all right see that All right, this one goes to the pilot assembly. This is one you need to be really careful of. Small adjustable wrench. Get it on there and get the thing moving. It's got several threads that are very fine threads. Like I said, not to repeat myself, they can be cross-threaded. And then you have to take it all apart. Sometimes have to replace the actual valve or the thermal pile, which we will show you in another video. In this case, it is coming off and we can just pull it out like that. See it? You all still with me? Any questions, leave them down in the comments. Let's continue. See where we're at now? We got the harness disconnected. They came out of right there, as well as our feed line for our striker on the ignition that's in the thermal pile, which we'll talk about that another time. Now we need to get this fitting right here off of this old gas valve. A little pipe wrench, a little bit of luck. Nice and easy. It's gotta come off there. There it is. Nice. There's a lot of pipe dope that's on here. I'm trying not to put my hands on it. It'll go all over me and a clothes and everything you touch. That's got to come out. We're going to reuse this part. We're going to clean it up real well. I'll show you the next move. All right, back when we started the video, I showed you the things we needed, like tools and stuff. Here is that half-inch stainless steel nipple. All right, this used to, for, you know, it was a rough-in job. We used it to stub out a shower head, but we still use this for other things. Watch this. 
We're gonna take this nipple and we're going to put it into that threaded hole there on the old gas control valve. Don't worry about the valve anymore because the valve is no good, we're replacing it. There we go, thread it in there like that. Don't have to be too tight. Now this is gonna act like a handle for us to push down and counterclockwise turn and back this thing out of the heater. See that? Look at what I'm doing. Nice and easy. All right. I'm gonna take and unscrew that nipple out of there. This thing should be hand loose. See that? I'm just backing it out of there. Thus the importance of having the water drained out of this tank. Just like that. That's what we're working with right now. The old valve is out. We've got the lines all sitting there and everything. The gas is off. Now, when we talked about draining this heater, that is the reason why. We don't want to have to mess with a bunch of water coming out and getting trapped back in here and rotting things out. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll show you the sequence of events that we need to do next. The wire brush I told you you needed, we're going to use that to go inside here and clean the insides of that thread. So there's nothing in there. See, I've got a little bit of fiberglass that's kind of tucking its way in there. We don't want none of that stuff getting caught up in the thread work when we reinstall the new gas control valve. All that crap out of there. Real good, nice and clean. All right, here is our new control valve. Look closely, see the numbers? 1158, last four little digits. Let's look at that old one. 1158. Very important to match these numbers up or else you ain't gonna get this job done the right way. Let's take it out and install it. Okay, there we go. Now I'll show you something that's different about this, but we'll still do the same job. The gas valve made by Honeywell. New one made by Residio. Same thing. So don't go by the brand. As long as those numbers match up and it's the same type of valve, it's going to work. First thing we're going to do with the new gas control valve is you see these little green pop-outs just pull out. That's what's protecting the threads. There's one there and there's one on the bottom right there. Let's see if we can pull it off there and pop it off. And into the heater it goes. Nice and easy. This is kind of difficult to do with one hand. There we go. Tighten it by hand as much as you can. And then remember that little nipple that we had, we're gonna put that back in on the new one. And use this to tighten this thing down and get it lined up properly to complete this install. Y'all seeing that? You don't want to over tighten this thing. All right. Feels like it's starting to tighten up. We're going to make one more complete pass all the way around. We want not here to break anything. Now it's starting to tighten up. We want to get this so it's straight perpendicular and I'll show you the end result. That's how you want it to look. Nice and straight. Take the old nipple out there. Let's reinstall the parts that we took off there. All right, we're going to take that little brass nut that's got the ferrule on it and we're going to Screw it into our small orifice, get it started. Be really careful, like I said before, if it doesn't feel right going in, right here it is, then stop. You're cross-threading it. That feels pretty good. I don't have much uh, resistance. You don't have to tighten it down. You want to take this little magnesium tube for the pilot assembly and put it up in there and shove it as far up there as we possibly can before we start tightening. This trick needs to take the time. There, just like that. All right, see that? Well, that tube has to be all the way up so the complete fitting as well as that ferrule that was attached to it is on this. So when you tighten it, that ferrule will crimp down and create the seal. Nice and easy, we take our adjustable wrench and we'll finish that tightening. Next is our flexible little line here that is the feeder for the burner. And it's got a flared end on there with a little nut and all that good stuff. You see that nut will slide up through there. That's going to go into our second hole 
right here. I'm gonna have to kind of finagle that around that one we just had. Push it straight up in, like so. Take your nut, that nut, and nice and easy. Like I talk about this cross-threading stuff. We don't want it cross-threaded. Take your time until it gets started, like that. We'll go around a little bit. You wanna keep that thing shoved up in there so the flare seats on the inside. Here we go, a little adjustable wrench. I keep on saying it, and I'm going to say it until I'm blue in the face, nice and easy. Take your time. Taste will make waste in this case. All right, so we got our gas lines all lined up in here and all that good stuff. We're going to take that little harness. I'm going to reassemble it or reattach it right here to the front of the gas control valve. Just push and plug and play. Remember, here's our little igniter. It's got to go up inside of here. There we go. See that? Just push it in. Just like that. Is that fitting right there? One end is flare. And one end we have pipe dope on. And it's straight thread. It's going to go into this connector right here. Nice and easy. Take your time. Hand tighten that. And then get yourself your little wrench on there and snug it up real well. Preference is I like to use a little bit of pipe dope on the horn end of the flare right there. I've had a lot of these leak without using it. You can't trust anything that's made these days. Good old Rector Seal 5. Now we're going to take our flexible gas line and we're going to line it up start hand threading that on there. Make sure the flare on there is seated against the other flare. You're going to take your little wrench and give it a little tweak just like that. While filling a water here full of water we always want to make sure that there is a faucet on in the house on the hot side so we can bleed the air out which we've already done. Time to fill the tank. difficult we're in a tight little spot here there we go just like that now we are live with gas it's time to spray all our gas connections with soap water all right pushing in in the pilot position holding it while hitting the striker and watching for my spark underneath now being new it's going to take a while for it to sequence itself and actually light so have patience. There you guys have it. That's how to replace a gas control valve on a residential gas water heater, natural gas. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, I wouldn't be messing around with trying to replace one of the gas control valves on an older heater because the chances are you probably aren't going to find that valve in the first place. Take your time, safety first, follow the steps. Got any comments, questions, leave them down below and don't forget to keep plumbing.